if not us, then who? It's David and Goliath in North Dakota. The Sioux tribe tries to stop a huge oil pipeline as they claim it will desecrate sacred land. Protest in North Dakota against a major oil pipeline continues to grow. Over 100 Native American tribes have joined the fight against the project, saying that it threatens one tribe's water supply. We have people of all faiths and of all races here standing up against corporate America to tell them that enough is enough and that our water comes before money. Well, in recent months, the repression against the water protectors and journalists covering the movement has continued to intensify. I distinctly remember seeing that rubber bullet coming at me. But what they did to us truly, in my mind, violated our civil rights to peacefully protest. Okay, this is with respect to the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. The governor giving a few remaining holdouts the chance to pack up and go home without a rest. This comes after an Army Corps of Engineers deadline to clear a protest camp yesterday. The thing that we don't agree with this pipeline is this is going to transport um, 500,000 barrels a day, mm -hmm. and there's absolutely no benefit to our tribe. Yes. Um, we pay the cost. Exactly. We get invited by the government to go to a country to visit and to look at the human rights situation of indigenous peoples, particularly for my mandate as the UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous People. The, the issue of, uh, of the tribes not being consulted whenever any government project comes to their community is really an issue that has been there since colonization up to the present. So my sense is that it will, it will be beyond the pipeline. Uh, we're up against the federal government, federal laws, the, the Congress who is pretty much uh, owned by the oil industry, they get contributions, so the lawmakers are, are creating laws to enable development, especially with the oil industry. The executive order by President's office is illegal. No president can overrule the federal regulatory process. It's not an issue of just Standing Rock. It's an issue of humanity. Mm. But this is my tribal identification card. Yeah. And it okay. says Standing Rock. Tribe. Tribal membership identification card. But yeah, those okay. four words don't yeah. accurately reflect who I am. Yeah. That's who the United States government says that I am. Yeah. Those first three numbers on my enrollment number, yeah. that's a POW camp that I come from. Uh huh. POW camp 302. Okay, okay. Then the rest yeah. of those numbers are my pedigree. And the only uh -huh. pedigree that the United States government keeps track of, horses, dogs, and Indians. Yeah, really? So if you think they about that. pedigrees of Indians? Yeah. Because of this blood quantum? Blood quantum, it's pedigree. Yeah. So this doesn't accurately reflect who I am. And unfortunately, it seems like the, it's the existing legal framework that has put us at odds. Mm. Because the Corps of Engineers is going to tell you that they did everything right. North Dakota SHPO is going to tell you that they did everything right. And mm -hmm. of course, we're going to tell you that we did everything mm -hmm. right. But it couldn't be possible that everybody did everything right when there's so much wrong with this right, project. exactly. Yeah. For me, it's really an iconic you know, issue because it does represent the long history of uh, uh, indigenous peoples in this country in terms of mm -hmm. how 
consultation has not been done in the proper manner. Mm. The United States government, you know, they're kind of a little nervous now because they thought they could just bulldoze over yeah. these Indians. Yeah. And they didn't expect what happened. None of us did. Mm. But now there's a unique opportunity. Mm. You can either fear what happened or be mm. angry about what yeah. happened or look at it as an opportunity. Sure. An opportunity for us to kind of grow together and yeah. be good relatives and yeah. figure this out together. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Dave Archambo and I'm the chairman of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Now we have to stand up and let the world know this is how uh, dominance over one race or another continues today in modern day. No, that was that was in 1492. That was that was back in 1492. That don't matter. Our laws and our court systems are founded on that, and they reflect on that today. So it's time. It's time for us to all stand up, not only take care of and pay attention to our children, not only to clean up around our own homes, not only to stop using, but to start exposing what this world has done to indigenous peoples. The more we resist, the more you'll find that, that um, there are more arrests of indigenous populations because they're coming to our last, the last little, little bit of resources that we have left. And if we lose those, then we have no homeland. If we have no homeland, there is no place where our languages will exist anymore, our culture will exist. We'll have to scatter to the far corners of the earth. No, everything uses the river, not just us, so. I don't know why people don't see that. I wish they would. I wish I had powers to just make them open their eyes and their heart up and see this. How deadly this pipe is. site of a, a memorial site for Sitting Bull, uh, Tatanka Iokotake. It's a private uh, site and it was memorialized for his, um, for him and his accomplishments and for the Lakota people and people in general of America. As Lakotas, we're always going to be fighting for the rest of our lives and our children's lives. We'll be setting a foundation now for them as, as our children and grandchildren uh, continue as in their adult, adulthoods to save what is left of our um, land, you know, that's rightfully ours. Hey, yo, hey, 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 yo, hey, 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 yo.